Annotated bibliographies are a major part of grad school success, but it is almost never discussed just how useful an annotated bibliography can be. So today we are discussing what is an annotated bibliography and how and when to use an annotated bibliography in grad school. Annotated bibliographies are a document that a researcher, a writer, a scholar is developing any time they are preparing for a major project. And just like a regular bibliography, an annotated bibliography contains a list of readings and their citations in some sort of order, most commonly alphabetical order. But what makes an annotated bibliography different is that each reading and its citation is paired with an annotation, which are short descriptions that really illuminate or highlight what is most significant about each reading. However, an annotation should not just be a summary. And that's because summaries solely explain what has just happened or what was just said, but they do not convey the importance or the significance of the document or the text that you're reading. So while an annotation will include some summary, it is so important to remember that an annotation or the descriptions that you write should not just be a summary. There should be more information about the readings than just what was said or what it was about. Now, if you're hearing all of this and you're still like, you're not quite sure how to write something that's not a summary, do not panic. I have an entire video that talks about the four best ways to write a strong and useful annotation. So after you watch this video, I would highly suggest you go check out that video and it will be in the end cards at the end of the screen as well. So you can just easily click to that video. Okay, but now that we have a good general idea of what an annotated bibliography is, we really need to delve in when to use an annotated bibliography. Most commonly in grad school, students are going to develop annotated bibliographies when they are preparing for their comprehensive or qualifying exams in their PhD program. And usually what this consists of is you will work with the faculty member to develop a sort of organizational list that is usually focused on a topic, theme, or major question. And then you will collect Select readings that are responding to this topic, theme, or question, and then you would annotate them to prepare for your final exams or your comprehensive exams as a means to or a milestone to your graduate process or your graduate program. You may also use an annotated bibliography when you are preparing a literature review. Now, again, I have an entire video discussing what is a literature review and how to write one. So I will link that down in the description below. But when you are preparing for a literature review, you are usually amassing a large amount of readings. And it's your job as the author of a literature review to organize or to make sense of these readings. And so annotated bibliographies can help you locate the patterns or think about how to topically or thematically organize your readings for the paper or the document that you are writing. Now, while these are the most common two reasons why you would use an annotated bibliography, I think it is super important to say that an annotated bibliography is really useful anytime you are trying to make sense of a bunch of readings or if you're trying to see general trends or patterns within a larger field or topic. And so for that reason, annotated bibliographies can be super useful for other documents, like if you are developing a syllabus for your undergraduate students, or if you are getting ready to prepare for major grant applications. Having annotated bibliographies help you think through and be assured or know what are the most important and significant parts of each reading to you and to whatever document application that you are preparing for. Now you may have gotten to this point in this video and thought, okay, I get what it is, when to use it, that it's for organizing, but how do I use it? Or what is it that makes this different or better than just taking a note? If annotated bibliographies are done properly and the descriptions are written well enough, they will do three major things. The first being they're going to address major frameworks of the readings. And that could be either theoretical frameworks, methodological frameworks, main arguments, but generally it's going to focus on the most important frameworks or ideas that are coming from the readings. The second thing that it's going to do is it's going to draw connections to other important readings or other readings that are related to your field or your research. And this is going to help you understand the field a little bit better. And then the third thing that it's going to do is it's going to highlight either the major problems or gaps within the article or the reading, or 
it's going to highlight the major findings or innovations that come from the readings. So if your annotated bibliography is done correctly and your annotation has the correct information in it, you can quickly recognize what is the reading about, how this reading impacts the field or the research topic or question, and why it needs to be talked about or why you are including it within your document. This can be a huge time saver because in just about five to seven sentences, you are really highlighting the most important part of each reading, how it is connected to other readings and thus illuminating what is the trend of the field. And then you are able to develop your analysis on why it is important, why it's not important, or why we need to talk about it more or less. And so by developing a strong annotated bibliography, you are doing much of the heavy lifting before ever having having to do any real writing. And so that is why an annotated bibliography can help anybody preparing for any major project because it is really getting to the meat and potatoes of each reading. Also, I am planning on developing an annotated bibliography worksheet to help anybody who is trying to develop their own annotated bibliography and guide them through the writing, the organizing, and even the managing process of your annotated bibliographies or your reading list. So if that's something that might interest you, leave a comment down down below so I can kind of get a gauge of who might be interested. And if you're watching this after January of 2022, I would check the description box below to see if the link is there. I would also check this playlist on reading and writing in grad school. And if you found at least two things useful, definitely hit thumbs up so others know that this video has good quality content. When you hit a thumbs up, it tells YouTube that this video should be shared with others. And as always, if you have questions or concerns, please leave them down in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Your support helps a small YouTuber like me continue to grow. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.